pre-race anxiety, pre-race nerves, anything that gets you nervous or anxious before a competition. Welcome to the video guys. My name is Nico Schultz, 800 meter runner here in Nebraska. And this is something I've struggled with ever since I started running track or really any competition in general, even in my early days when I started playing football, basketball. But as the competition levels increase and as I've gotten older, I've been able to manage them a little bit better even when the stakes got even higher. For example, in high school, when you're competing for your team, you're competing for the fun of it. You're competing because you like the sport. You're able to walk onto the team and have a good time. But then when you get to college, you're competing for a lot of different variables. You're competing for a spot. You're competing for, in a sense, money if you're on a scholarship. You, you are expected to perform at a certain standard if you're brought on for a certain amount of money. And there's so many different factors going on in your head and there's so many high level athletes out there that you're competing against that you can sometimes get lost in, in the fog in a sense and there's been a lot of races that i have not performed to my best or i have not executed my race plan because i mentally was not in the right headspace going into the competition and it took me a good season to figure out where i, I had to be mentally and i'm going to share with you guys some strategies and tips that, that i do that i do personally to help you guys get, get through this, whether at the high school level, middle school level, college, or even if you're a pro watching this. And so this is what I do. So each uh, competition, no matter how big or how small, I always tell myself, it's just another race. Uh, and this always calms my nerves, no matter if I'm going against one of the best in the world or if I'm going against you know my own teammates at, at my home track meet and nobody else shows up. This really just helps calm things down and the work that you put in is, is already done. When you're showing up to attract me, you don't have to do anything extraordinary. You don't have to do anything that your body isn't used to doing. Yes, there's gonna be certain days where you do amazing because your body's feeling 100%. There's gonna be some days where you're a little bit tired going into a competition and it's gonna take a little bit more effort. Some days it's gonna feel easy. Some days it's gonna feel difficult. But the biggest thing is that you have to constantly remind yourself that, okay, I've already done so much work for this. I've put in the late nights, early mornings, discipline, I've ate right, I've done everything up to this point that I could possibly do. Now all I gotta do is go out there and do my thing. It's almost like you already put the money in the bank and you're just waiting for things to happen. You, you know, My coach always likes to say the same, the haze already in the barn, you already got this. And so you have nothing else to be nervous about. And so uh, the best thing too to, to remember is that a lot of athletes are in your shoes as well. When you're going out there and everybody looks like super tough, super mean, in, in a sense, they're they're in the same boat as you. They're nervous, they're, they're nervous about their competition, people in the stands watching. And, and that's another factor too. I mean, uh, silencing the crowd is, is something that is difficult no matter how big of a competition you're going against. Um, it's, it's nice to not get too high and then not get too low as well. And what I mean by that is you don't wanna get too excited before you race. There are some people who love having conversations before a race to calm their nerves or, or, or just kind of being funny or kind of being goofy competing locked out of the moment and there's some people who are who are too low who are too oh my gosh like this is about to be the worst thing in my life uh, they're doubting themselves they, they don't really they, they don't really want to be there and so you want to stay in this happy median between the two of, of not being too too ecstatic and not being too low. There's been a lot of track meets where I've showed up and I've saw people and I've saw friends and people have come up to me. They're like, oh, Nico, blah, 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 asking all these questions. And I would kind of get get my focus taken away from my competition. And I would start having these conversations and I show up to the competition flat. I show up to, to the competition without any any of the juice, any of the fire. And I'm like, dang, like, why do I feel like this? It's because I'm giving away the energy before the competition even started. And you can't do this. You have to make sure you are staying locked in. And in college, I'm sure some of my college athletes can relate to this. There are so many times where the weight is ridiculous. And this is what causes the most anxiety is having to wait out there for the next you know, competition to end so that you can walk onto the track and you're just there sitting. And something that I like to do is just keep myself grounded. Um, I'm, I'm constantly just like kind of bopping my head. I'm just doing motions that like make me feel confident. I'm just like, I kind of like practice my arms a little bit. I'm just like thinking about my race strategy. I'm just doing certain like psychology things to help me. And somebody, some people do their own little thing. I mean, some people want to bounce side to side. Some people do some jumps. Some people do some strides. I just like envisioning my, my success and, and being there and just kind of going like this in a sense too. I, I stole that one from, from Will Sumner, the national champion last year in the 800 who ran 144. I saw that he worked with uh, Sports Psych and he does this to envision his success. And it's something I kind of took too and it's been working. I did that before my Arkansas race last week when I ran 147 and I genuinely think it does work. And, and, another, and another way and another strategy that I like to calm my nerves and calm my mind is journaling. Journaling writes out my race plan my race thoughts, fears, everything like that. And it's always like this, before I journal, I don't want to journal, I, I, I hate it. But then as soon as I, that, that pen hits the paper, I have so much to say and then I reread it 
and it really calms my mind because it's, it's your own thoughts it's the way you're feeling it's the way that you view yourself and that is super important especially in the world of track and field too because during the race when let's say you have a longer race like an 800 for example and somebody passes you early on within 200 400 meters in your mind you got to tell yourself i can beat this guy i got to stay with them i cannot let them get too far ahead of me if they pass you in your mind you instantly tell you, oh you suck they're better than me yada 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 they're gonna end up passing you and you're never gonna catch up because you're too busy doubting yourself rather than making up the distance and making down the ground making up the ground to win the competition and so you just have to always be positive and always stay locked in and just stay disciplined during the race and just be in like this, this middle median meditative state where you are just ready to fire on all cylinders and so going back to the journal that i mentioned with you guys about writing out my race strategy calms me down writing out my my pre-race thoughts fears ambitions really anything just getting something on that paper really does help and if you want to take it to the next level too what i recently started doing is meditating with um, classical music classical music they say even helps you study and so uh, i saw a little study on that about how you know it helps you study and do class work and so like i thought to myself okay why not why don't i do these before my track races and my competitions so what i do is i put my, my music on i kind of sit like in a zen pose on my hands on my knees and I'll just sit there kind of crossed and uh, just, just envision the success, just calm everything down. And every, like, it's almost like the world just kind of stops moving a little bit. And it really helps. It really helps because I'll show up to these competitions and I'll, I'll really be locked in. It, it, it's, it's an effort to get into the state that you want to be in before your competition. It's not something that just happens naturally. It's, it's, you got to have, it, it took me a while to adapt race awareness. And the only way I, I achieved that was from running a lot of 800 and from training my mind to be able to to compete at a high level and it, it's super important it's something that you cannot overlook and basically you just got to remind yourself that you're meant to be in that position you're meant to be there there were so many times last year and so many pre previous races where i thought you know you're not meant to be there you're not you're not good enough you, you don't deserve this right and i had to get rid of that way of thinking because i'm putting in so much work and so much time to show up to these competitions and think less of myself and you don't deserve that you deserve the world and you have to be able to, in a sense, give self-love and self-confidence and self-belief that you are capable of achieving whatever whatever it is that you set your mind out to do. And that is that is the, that is the number one thing you gotta remember in this video or take away from this video is that you gotta go in, believe in yourself, even if you do absolutely terrible. You cannot lose your identity. You do absolutely great or absolutely terrible. Do not lose your identity within your competition. You are not going to change because you, you ran an amazing time and you're not going to change because you ran a terrible time. You're still the same person you are. What you do on the track versus who you are as a person are two different entities. And it's difficult to believe that because you spend so much time in track and field and so much effort and energy into it that in a sense it carries over to your personal life because that's all you think about. But one thing that's really helped me is honestly this, this, this YouTube thing, this, this video editing thing, it's, it's helped me take my mind away from all the craziness in track and field, put my energy into something else and and basically take that away so that when i'm on the track i'm thinking about track i'm 100 track i'm there i'm on the track i'm envisioning success and when i'm off the track on youtube i'm here helping you guys i'm here uh giving some knowledge i'm here uh helping vid people with videos and, and different things like that and so uh whatever your niche is whatever your hobby is definitely do that outside of that to help take your mind off of things because it does it does get draining especially at the collegiate level the seasons are long the seasons are are daunting in a sense i mean when you go all the way from you're training for a fall all the way into the summer june i mean that's almost that's more than almost like half a year that's more than half a year it's like seven eight months and so you just can't get lost and <laughs> what i say is get lost in the sauce in a sense and so that's that's my my biggest takeaways for you guys is no race is bigger than the next journaling envisioning your success your success not having self-doubt and just remembering to not get lost into your track identity because uh, I have gotten lost in it in both senses. There's been races where I've been a little bit too high and, and I, I did really good and I was riding off that high and I was, I was getting too froggy. I was getting too uh, uh, cocky in a sense. And then there's been races where I've done really bad and then a, a downward spiral will start, right? I, I start getting down on myself. I start thinking that I'm not good enough. I start thinking that I don't deserve to be at the D1 level. And even at this level, even against some of the best in the world, like like people still have these thoughts. There's a lot of Olympians and a lot of people, a lot of CEOs, are people who have so much success, success in the world that are depressed, that have issues. I mean, no matter what you have materialistic or what you've accomplished, people still have to live with whatever they think of themselves. At the end of the day, it's you versus you. And you really have to train your mind and, and discipline your actions to align to the person that you want to be. Last year, I had a lot of issues because 
uh, there was things I wanted to accomplish and I wasn't doing. Like there was accomplishments on the track that I was falling short of doing. There was accomplishments with my personal life. Like this hobby, for example, I would always think about doing it and I would never put the actions forward. And it was killing me in the inside because I was so passionate about it. And I kept on having these dreams, but I would never pursue them. And so it was just this downward spiral of wanting to do something but procrastinating it. And then putting in work on the track that wasn't wasn't being seen. The results weren't, weren't being performed. And I just, I was losing my mind. I was like, man, what do I do? And I really had to take a step back, debrief from everything, take a break, and then come back and hit it even harder for 2024. And that's why I do these videos. And that's why uh, I'm here today sharing, sharing with you guys my personal experiences. So if you guys have any questions or concerns, please leave them in the comments with your, with your situation, your current scenario, and uh, any way that you think I can help you uh, get through whatever, whatever it is that you're going through at the moment. So Thank you guys. This has been Nico Schultz, 800 meter from Nebraska on my two cents on how to deal with pre-race anxiety and mental health and self-belief and confidence on the track. So stay tuned for the next video, guys. But this has been Nico and peace out.